So today we're here for a gentle restorative yoga blend. So we'll start with some warming up and some gentle poses, taking our time, trying to find ease, and then we'll move into some restorative work. We're going to need some variety of cushions, pillows, blankets, towels. If you have blocks at home, go ahead and grab those and we'll build up our support when we get to that part of the class. I'm wearing my Superman shirt, one of my Superman shirts, because we are going to conclude today's class with Super Baddha Konasana. And that's a joke because the pose is not called Super Baddha Konasana, it's called Supta Baddha Konasana. But yoga instructors love that joke. I tell that in my trainings when I go to trainings all the time. You know, as always, they love to see me there. <clears throat> anyway, we're starting seated today. I'm sitting on a blanket. It's always an option for any yoga class to sit on your blanket if you'd like to, but I especially like it for a gentle, restorative class. Get the hips off the floor, help level out the knees. So we'll stack the spine and we'll just start shifting our weight from side to side, grounding into our sits bones, trying to find equal pressure on each side of the body. We'll stack the spine. Let's shrug the shoulders up and roll them back and down a couple times. Let's reverse directions. And then we'll roll them back a couple more times. Let the finish rolling back just to bring more openness to the front body. So as we slide those shoulder blades down the back, we stack the spine, we lift the sternum. Let's just rest our hands on our thighs. You can have your palms up or your palms down, whatever feels better to you today. And we'll gently close our eyes. And just bring awareness to the breath. Now become aware of the length of your inhales and your exhales. If you can count to the music. Now let's begin to lengthen the exhales. So we'll keep the inhales the same. And we'll really slow those exhales down. And if we can, let's try to take twice as long on our exhales as our inhales. So maybe we inhale for four and exhale for eight, or whatever it is for you. As you finish your next round, just return to normal breath. Let the eyes open. It's nice to spend more time on our exhales sometimes because that exhale is where the parasympathetic nervous system really kicks in. That's our rest and digest nervous system. That's where we get that really calming effect, slowing the heart rate, lowering the blood pressure on those long exhales. So whenever you can spend more time on your exhale, you might find a little more calm. All right, let's just stack the spine here, dropping the right ear to the right shoulder, perhaps resting the hand here, getting a light stretch in the side of the neck. Coming back to center, and tipping the left ear to the left shoulder, option to rest the hand here. back to center, pressing the crown of the head toward the ceiling nice and tall, then just tipping the chin to the collarbone and lifting to the back of the neck. Coming back to center, inhaling to lengthen that neck, exhaling to turn the head to the right. Relaxing back to center, inhaling tall, exhaling, turning the head to the left. Coming back 
to center. Now let's all grab onto our knees now. And we'll do a seated cat-cow. So coming into cow, we'll lift the chest and arch the back a little bit. And then scooping into cat, we'll curl the abs and look down. Inhale, lift, look up. Exhale, scoop, tuck in. Let's just try to follow our own breath now. Let the inhale tell you when to lift. And the exhale tell you it's time to scoop. We're just mobilizing the spine. Warming up. As we finish our next round, we'll just come back to neutral spine. Let's slide the rib cage to the right. Come back to center. Slide the ribs to the left. And just continue at your own pace, right and left. A couple more sets. It's gentle, it's not stressful. As we finish this up, we'll come back to neutral spine. Now we're going to stir the pot, come into our cow, we'll shift our ribs to the right, scoop into cat, shift to the left, come back to cow for one, right, scoop, left, two, and around one more time this direction. And pausing here, we'll reverse directions. Pushing ribs left, scooping into cat, pushing ribs right, coming back to cow. Two more times. And once more. All right, now our spines are nice and limber. Let's switch the cross of our legs. And we'll come into owl pose. That's our twist, our seated twist. So we're going to sweep the right hand behind the back and use that arm to prop ourselves up nice and tall. So press down into that hand, lift your sternum. Let's bring the left hand to the right thigh. Start with your breath. Inhale tall to the crown of your head. Exhale, take a twist to the right. We'll pause, we'll inhale again and lengthen that spine one more time. Exhale and twist. You may want to look over your shoulder. You can use each breath to bring more length to your spine, each exhale to turn farther into your feet. Relax back to center. Now we're sweeping the left hand behind, grounding that hand down into the floor, lifting the sternum. Right hand crosses over to the left thigh. Inhale first to stack your spine, then exhale and twist. Pause to inhale. Exhale to twist. Perhaps looking over your shoulder. Breathing, gently twisting. Nice controlled twist. Relaxing back to center. Let's come forward onto our hands and knees now. And if you have a blanket, it's nice to pad your knees with that blanket. Knees under the hips, wrists under the shoulders, always the option here to make fists so you can keep your wrists more neutral if that's more comfortable for you. Let's barrel roll the hips now. So we're coming to our Cow, we'll shift the hips around, we'll scoop the abs. Come back to the cat, scoop around. One more time, reversing direction. Two, and three. Now let's focus on our abdominals for just a moment. Let's draw the navel in and up. Let's slide the shoulder blades down the back. Let's lengthen the neck. Let's slide the right foot back. We'll rock the ball of the foot. We'll float that right foot across the left foot. Looking over the left shoulder. Rocking the diagonal here. And we'll float that leg straight out behind us. We can extend the left arm forward. Like we're reaching out to shake someone's hand. You can hold here for spinal balance where we can sway the arm and leg back and forth a couple of times. Keeping that core braced. Coming back and down to hands and knees. Now sliding the left foot back. 
rocking on the ball of the foot. Pulling the left foot across the right foot, looking over the right shoulder, rocking it out here. Now floating that right leg straight out behind us, extending the left arm forward as though you're reaching to shake someone's hand. We can hold here for spinal balance, we can sway back and forth. We'll come back down to hands and knees. Now from here, we're stepping the right foot forward, coming to low lunge. So I'm going to flip my toes on my left foot so my toenails are down. Coming to a nice low lunge. Bring hands to heart center. Inhale, lean forward and lengthen. Exhale, take a twist to the right, hooking the left elbow over the right knee. And keep your palms pressed together or you can make a fist with your right hand and press into your left palm. Press, press the lunge. Breath to it. As you breathe, try to draw the abs in to make more space for the torso to twist. Relaxing back to center. Bring that right foot back. The left foot forward. Low lunge. Right toenails down on the mat. Hands to heart center. Inhale, lengthen the knee forward. Exhale, take a twist. The right elbow over the left thigh, drawing the abs in. Option to make a fist with your left hand and press into your right palm. Breathe. Twist. And relaxing back to center. Let's bring that left leg back. Let's bring the right foot forward again. This time, we're going to curl those back toes under. Lift the back knee up, coming into a low lunge. Now walking our hands up to our thigh, we're sinking our hips and pressing forward into Anjane Asana. Feeling a stretch in your left hip and quads here. Breathing and sinking. Now we're going to press back. Extending the front leg, not locking completely, just keep a little micro bend in that knee here. Flexing the foot, inhale, tall through the spine, exhale, hinging forward, Hanuman Asana. If you've got blocks that you want to put your hands on here or some kind of support, that's fine. Try and keep that spine long, not rounding over, so we're lifting the sternum here. Putting that gentle stretch in the hamstrings in that right leg. Breathing into it. We would use those exhales to go deeper if you can. We call that our sinking breath. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to sink. Take your time. Always listening to the body. Let's shift forward again. Walk our hands back up to the thigh. Keep the sternum sinking forward and down into Anjane Asana. I want to remind you to lift your chest for this. If you continue to lean forward, you'll get less of a stretch here. If you lift your torso, you're opening up your hip a little bit more. More breathing, more still sinking. Now we're pushing back into Hanumanasana one more time. Hinging forward, spine is long. Inhale and exhale, pressing deeper into the hamstring stretch. back up. Let's bring that right leg back and we'll step the left foot forward now. Bringing hands to the thigh. Now pulling the back toes under lifting. Sitting forward. Flexing that front foot, leg is long, but a little micro bend in the knee here. Inhale tall, exhale hinge forward. Breathe and sink. Let 
your body give you permission to go a little deeper. Shift them forward once more. Ajumayasana. Send them down. Press them forward. Open the hip in the right leg and the right quad. And press them back. Ajumayasana. Inhale, lengthen to your spine. Exhale, folding deeper. Couple more breaths. And then pull that leg back. I'm going to move my blanket out of the way now. Because I want to come down onto my side. I'm going to lie on my side, stacking my hips and my shoulders. Just relax my head here. Arms are forward, palms together. Knees and hips are bent at the right angle. I'm going to keep my legs down and grounded. I'm going to open my arms like a book. I'm going to inhale up and exhale and open. Let's hang out here for a breath or two for the first one. And then we're just going to make a gentle flow out of it for a few more. So expand the ribs and chest. Exhale and sink deeper. On our next inhale, the arm comes up. On the exhale, bring the palm down. Let's do this five times as a flow. Inhale up, exhale open. Inhale up, exhale and close. Inhale up, exhale open. Inhale up. Exhale and close. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Up. Open. Up. Close. At your own pace for two more. finish, just take a moment, take a breath. We're going to switch sides. You can, you can turn over, just roll over one way or other. I'm going to flip end to end so that I can still face forward here. And once again, I am stacking hips, stacking shoulders, relaxing head and neck. Knees and hips are at right angles. The legs are going to stay grounded. Palms together, arms extended in front. First time we do it, we'll hold up, hang out for a few breaths. Let's inhale, open. Exhale, out here. Stay here for a few breaths. Expanding the ribs and sinking deeper. You're just gonna find whatever range works for you here. Don't force a twist, just relax into it. On our next inhale, bring the arm up. And the exhale will close. Let's do it five times as a flow. Inhale up. Exhale open. Inhale up. Exhale close. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Up. Open. Up, close. Two more at your own pace, following your own breath. And as we all finish, we'll take a moment to take a breath. And we'll roll onto our backs now. Feet planted close to the back side. Ideally, you can brush your heels with your fingertips here. We're going to ground into our shoulders and ground into our feet. 
for an articulating bridge. So we're not just lifting the hips, we're peeling the spine. Think about unzipping a zipper, one little piece at a time. So as we inhale, let's tilt the pelvis and scoop and lift up. You can come to straight line in your hips, you can arch your back more if you prefer. Let's hold it up here for a few breaths. On your next exhale, start from the top of your spine and roll down one vertebra at a time. Let's inhale to peel up. Rolling up like a zipper and roll back down. Four more like this. Inhale, lift. Exhale, rolling back down. For three, scoop the abs, peel the spine up. down. Two more. Ground into your feet. Ground into your shoulders. And one more time. Let's just widen our feet a little bit and we'll sway the knees from side to side, releasing the back. Coming back to center, crossing the right ankle over the left leg, keeping that right knee open like a number four. With both hands grabbing the left thigh and pulling in for our supine pigeon. We can press the right elbow against the right inner thigh, hugging the leg, opening the hip. Coming back down, let's switch the cross here. So we're going to plant the right foot, picking the left ankle over the right knee, but keeping the left knee open. Both hands grabbing the right thigh, pulling in and bracing the left elbow against the left inner thigh. Hugging in and using our breath to find more openness in our hips. Releasing back down, uncrossing the legs. Take a breath. Let's do a gentle spinal twist now. Let's start by crossing the right leg over the left leg. And let the knees just fall to the left. We can bring the arms out, keeping our shoulder blades grounded. We might turn the head to the right. Just sinking into it. Now coming back to center and switching the cross. So we'll ground the right foot down. We'll cross the left leg over. We'll let the legs fall to the right. Perhaps turning the head to the left. and twisting. Coming back to center, uncrossing the legs. Let's roll to one side and press ourselves up. Let's move into some restorative work now. This is where we'll be using a lot of support to bolster ourselves. The idea is 
I'm gonna feel fully supported so we can just release, relax, ground down and let go. I'll remind you that as we set up for our restorative poses, we do hold these poses for several minutes. So what feels comfortable for a short time may not feel comfortable in the long run. So we do make adjustments for that. So we hopefully can find comfort and ease throughout the pose. The first pose I'm offering today is a child's pose. It's a supported child's pose. A couple things you might want to do. I like to roll up towels under my ankles so that as I sit back here for several minutes, I'm not locking my, my ankles out too much for too long. This is a nice thing to try if that's, an, if that's an issue for you. If you have really flexible ankles, you may not need this at all. So that's one. Then I like to roll up a blanket, not too thick, but a small roll that I can put behind my knees so I'm not crunching my knees the whole time. This gives me some nice support here. Now, I'm going to pull my bolster in between my knees. And I'm going to use as much padding as I want or as I need feel enough support here as I come forward into child's pose. So I could pack this up higher if I wanted to. I could put blocks under it or pillows on top of it. A couple of options here for hands and head. We can stack our hands and rest our forehead on our hands like this. We can also grab opposite elbows and rest our forehead on our forearms like this. We could also turn our head to one side or the other. If you'd like to turn your head, I will give you a cue about three minutes in to turn your head the other direction, so that's fine. So you can either just put your head face down, or you can turn your head to one side, either way. Let's go ahead and get ourselves set up. Start settling in here. Taking a moment to check the body. And make sure everything feels supported. There's no effort. Release any tension from your shoulders. Let the hips sink. Your front body is supported. You can close your eyes. Settle in your child's pose.
If you have your head turned to one side, now's a good time to turn your head to the other side. So bringing our hands down to the floor, let's take a breath and slowly press ourselves up. Take a moment for the blood to come back up to your brain. And sit up. Next, we'll open up our hamstrings a little bit today with our Janu Shashasana. That's our head to knee pose. I'm going to hold on to one towel. Nice option to sit on a blanket for this one. And again, I'm going to need bolsters or pillows to stack up to support myself. Dhanushrasana, this is that single leg stretch. So let's bring the right leg out and the left foot to the right inner thigh. I'm going to put a towel under my right knee so it's not locked out and overstretched in the course of this pose. I'm going to put a bolster in front of myself here. I'm going to move forward onto this. I can put it whatever way it's going to be comfortable for me. I might want a little bit more than I had for child's pose here. Now, as you lean forward for this, you will, you'll naturally turn your head to one side or the other. We're not going to switch the head because we're going to switch sides all together very soon. Let's go ahead. Same options for hands, basically. You can stack your hands, you can grab your elbows, you can rest your head, you can turn your head. Be sure to use enough padding that you're not straining your back. You're supported, your front body is supported. And you're just breathing and sinking. Getting a nice, easy stretch in that right leg and the hamstring. Down, 
the shoulders melt and the back melt. Perhaps bringing our thought back to our breath, perhaps that breath we practiced earlier as we try to extend our exhales. We're deepening our breath and slowly sitting up. We're just going to switch sides on this one, so we'll move our bolsters out of the way for a moment. 
bringing the right leg in, taking the left leg out, moving my support to my left knee, bringing my right foot to my left inner thigh. And once again, just melting down into the bolsters and pads, the cushions. Trying to relax the shoulders, deepen the block. Gently let go of the hamstring. And we compress ourselves up once more. Take a breath. We can put aside most of our supports for right now. The next pose is going to be a side-lying supported lateral flexion. 
And we're going to need one, either a small bolster or rolled up blanket. You don't want something too big here. Um, it's going to go under your side. I know from experience that this bolster is way too big for me to try that. You might keep a couple other things handy just to support your head or shoulder, whatever. Everything else is just filling in. So this is true throughout our restorative work. Whenever you need to feel more supported under a shoulder, a foot, whatever it might be, you can always just stick something else there to fill in. I'm going to roll up a blanket. It's probably about right. So I'm going to start seated here. And then lie over your blanket or bolster. So it's hitting you kind of along the waist and lower ribs here. So you have some support, but you're slightly bent laterally. Now my legs are stacked here right now. I can leave them like this. I can play with those a bit later. I like to extend my bottom arm out if I can and rest my head on my arm. I could also add a pillow or a towel here if I'd like to. If my shoulder is not on the floor, I definitely need something under that. I need to feel my shoulders supported. My hips should be supported. So I've got contact at my hips, my waist, and my shoulder. The top hand can stay wherever is comfortable. If you want more openness in the side body, you can bring our palms together. The legs can stay here. You could also straighten your legs out more. The top leg forward a little bit. I like to do these deer pose legs where I keep my bottom leg where it is and I just bring my top knee back to my bottom heel. Another option for this pose, it's just an option, is to roll over and open up more onto your back more if you'd like to try that. So find whatever feels good to you. Close your eyes. Just feel yourself grounding down. Follow your breath.
We're going to switch sides now. We press ourselves up. We can turn around or go end to end on the other side. Lying over the bolster or pillow so it supports your waist and ribs. Shoulders supported, hips are supported. You can bring that top arm out, excuse me, the bottom arm out, the top arm can come out also, or can stay wherever is comfortable. Legs can stay bent, or you can bring that top leg back if you like. You can also roll onto your back and open up more if that's an option that appeals to you. Let's close our eyes, melt into the floor, follow the breath. Let's begin to press ourselves back up. We'll set up for our final pose. Today for final relaxation, I'm offering Supta Baddha Konasana. This will be a reclined Supta Baddha Konasana. That's a butterfly pose. You could do this on the floor without the extra bolster supporting your back. If you like, that would be a little bit more yin. That's great. You can just do a normal Shavasana if that's preferable to you as well. You'll need a bunch of stuff to pile up to make a ramp to lie on. So, a big bolster, a big pillow, whatever you've got, cushions. You can pile more cushions or pillows under. I'm going to use blocks because I'm here and I have blocks. I'm going to grab some extra blocks for myself. You could use uh, throw pillows, whatever you've got, if you want to support your legs with that. You can also take a blanket and make kind of a long roll out of it. So a couple of options here. So I've got my ramp. I'm going to scoot my backside up to my ramp. I'm going to bring the soles of my feet together. Now I can make this a little more casual. I can open my legs wider if I want heels further out from my torso if I like, whatever's comfortable for me here. This is restorative. 
Um, if you have cushions or throw pillows, you can put these under your thighs. Because again, it might feel okay to just lie back with your knees falling out to the side initially, but over time it could become less comfortable. So a little support, not a bad thing. Another option, let's do a combination. Just take a blanket, put it over your ankles, and then tuck it under your shins. This will also give you some support as you relax more deeply as you lie back. Finally, I do have a washcloth here. So I'm going to lie back. If you have an eye pillow, that works even better. Now I could add cushions to support my arms if I like as well. My arms could be whatever feels comfortable to me at my sides or straight out. Palms up ideally. Pillow, eye pillow or washcloth over the eyes. Coming into Supta Baddha Konasana, this is our recline butterfly pose. Let's just become aware of the weight of the body, settling in. Hopefully everything feels supported and you feel very grounded. Just check for any residual tension, any place you're holding yourself at all. You should be able just to let everything go, melt and sink. Bring that awareness back to your breath. Inhale and exhale. Let go of any stray thoughts that pass through. Stay with the breath. And just go deeper into your relaxation. You can stay in this pose for as long as you like. It's one of my favorite poses. It really opens up the front body and the hips. When we're ready, we'll deepen our breath. We bring some movement to our fingers and toes. We may want to remove any cushions or blocks from our legs. 
put aside our eye pillow or washcloth. And you can either just sit up or you can roll to one side off your bolster onto your elbow. And from there, we'll press ourselves back up to a comfortable seated position. Gently rocking back and forth, creating equal weight in both sides of our hips, stacking the spine, lifting the sternum, holding the shoulders back, rising up to the crown of the head, and bringing hands to heart center. I hope we've made some space for you today, some space relax, some space to be calm, some space to let some light in. Thank you for sharing this practice with me. Namaste.